How Berkshire Hathaway started, grew, and became a $618 billion company. Berkshire Hathaway is an American holding company with its headquarters in Omaha, Nebraska, USA, which is an investment vehicle for Warren Buffett that has an increasing number of subsidiaries engaged in a lot of business activities including insurance, retailing, manufacturing, automobile, publishing, banking, and so many more. Berkshire Hathaway began as a group of textile milling plants, but when Warren Buffett became the controlling shareholder, he began a progressive strategy of diverting cash flow from the core business to other investment. How Berkshire Hathaway Started Berkshire Hathaway originated from Hathaway Manufacturing Company and Berkshire Fine Spinning Associates. Hathaway Manufacturing Company is a cotton mill established in 1888 by Horatio Hathaway. The company was headquartered in Bedford, Massachusetts and was quite successful until World War I when the cotton industry began to decline. Berkshire Fine Spinning Associates which was formed when four textile companies merged together under common ownership in 1929. Berkshire Fine Spinning Associates was owned by Seabury Stanton and during its height, Berkshire Fine Spinning Associates was responsible for about a quarter of the fine cotton textile production in the United States. While Berkshire Fine Spinning Associates did slightly better, than Hathaway Manufacturing during World War I. Profits were very hit and miss and the industry bounced all over the place after the Great Depression. World War II brought some positive upswing as the company worked on uniforms for the military but after the war, it became clear that the industry was not stable. In 1955, Berkshire Fine Spinning Associates merged with Hathaway Manufacturing Company to form Berkshire Hathaway Incorporated. The new company was huge and had over 10,000 employees, around $120 million in revenue and more than 15 plants totaling around 6 million square feet of industrial space. However, despite this, the company's financial performance plummeted. The new corporation was headed by Seabury Stanton whose background was centered in the actual industry rather than the complicated finances that came with running a corporation, including the falling prices in cotton and increasing competition from both international and local companies and the future of Berkshire Hathaway was quite grim. Change of Ownership After the merge in 1955, the company was operating profitably under the late 1950s when things got so bad that Berkshire Hathaway had to sell more than half of its plants and laid off a large number of workers. Many analysts wrote off the company as doomed and turned their attention to other avenues as the company continued to struggle. However, in 1961, Berkshire cut its work to four days at several plants and showed a loss for the year. In 1962, the company closed three of its factory plants and experienced even greater losses due to depressed prices for its products. In the same year of 1962, Warren Buffett began to take an interest in Berkshire Hathaway and soon began to buy shares with the belief that the company's value was much higher than the current price indicated. According to interviews, Buffett had hoped to sell the shares back at a profit after being short on a purchase offer from Stanton, the then CEO of the company instead held on to the shares and continued buying more and more of them. At the time he started buying, the shares were valued at around $7.50 per share. How Berkshire Hathaway Grew By 1963, Buffett and his associates were the largest shareholders in the company and Buffett began to take a more active role in the company. In 1965, Buffett and his partnership owned enough stock to take over the company's management. Stanton retired from the company during the leadership change and Buffett placed Ken Chase 
as president. Chase was tasked with taking over the milling operations while Buffett turned his attention to the faltering financial side of the business. By the time Buffett took the company over, it only had about 2,300 employees and two operative mills. During the next few years, Buffett slowly began to move the company's base of operations to its current home in Omaha, Nebraska and quickly began to seek out alternative forms of revenue. Since World War II, the textile industry's cyclical nature continued to swing Berkshire Hathaway's profit up and down from 1965 to 1967. Buffett, who wanted the company to be more stable, began to shop around for some additional companies to invest in to help stabilize Berkshire Hathaway's bottom line. Then, in 1967, the company made its first step away from textile business with the purchase of Indemnity Company and National Fire and Marine Insurance Company for $8.5 million. The Omaha-based insurance companies mostly handled automobile insurance which was far more stable than the ups and downs of the textile industry. In 1968, Berkshire Hathaway purchased Sun Newspapers, a group of Omaha weeklies, the first of several newspapers that Berkshire Hathaway would eventually own. And a year later, the company expanded even further with the acquisition of Illinois National Bank and Trust Company of Rockford. Buffett became the chairman of Berkshire Hathaway in 1969 and, seeing the stabilizing effect of the other businesses that the company had purchased, continued to diversify and expand. However, unlike other businessmen at the time, Buffett acquired companies whose management and products he liked rather than buying companies that needed major changes or seemed exceedingly popular. This led to not only fame and fortune for Buffett but also for Berkshire Hathaway who had, just over a decade earlier, closed out the year with red ledgers. Between 1969 and 1979, Berkshire Hathaway continued its expansion and diversification, mostly acquiring companies in the insurance industry, including the purchase of Westco Financial Corporation in 1970 and some Geico shares in 1976. Berkshire Hathaway also increased its newspaper business with the purchase of the Buffalo Evening News. Blue Chip Stamps merged with Berkshire Hathaway in 1982 and that same year, Berkshire Hathaway acquired 90% of Nebraska Furniture Mart, the largest home furniture store in the nation. 1985 brought about plenty of profits and changes other than finally shutting down Berkshire Hathaway's textile industry. Some notable happenings included the $320 million acquisition of Scott and Fetzer Company which specialized in manufacturing and marketing, a 7% participation in Fireman's Fund Insurance Company and the establishment of Westco Financial Insurance Company. By 1987, Berkshire Hathaway's future was looking good. The Wall Street Journal reported that Berkshire Hathaway's stock portfolio had blown past the Dow Jones average of 233.6% to a whopping 748% since the market surge began in 1982. Berkshire Hathaway became the highest priced stock on the exchange at about $4,300 a share, up from $12 a share when Buffett first bought the company. Months after Buffett's 80th birthday in May 2010, he said he would be succeeded at Berkshire Hathaway by a team consisting of a CEO and three or four investment managers. Each of the latter will be responsible for a significant portion of Berkshire's investment portfolio. In Berkshire Hathaway's annual shareholder letter dated February 25, 2012, Buffett said that his successor as CEO had been chosen internally but not named publicly. While the intent of this message was to bolster confidence in the leadership of a Buffett-less Berkshire, critics have noted that this strategy of choosing a successor without a concrete exit strategy 
for the sitting CEO often leaves an organization with fewer long-term options while doing little to calm shareholders' fear. In June 2014, the firm's cash and cash equivalents rose past $50 billion, the first time it finished a quarter above that level since Buffett became chairman and chief executive officer. Where Berkshire Hathaway is today Berkshire Hathaway had a net income of more than $44 million as of 2017 and is the third biggest public company in the world according to Forbes Global 2000 with the most expensive shares in history costing about $300,000 per share. As of 2018, Berkshire Hathaway worth $618.1 billion. Thank you for watching our videos. We'd like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.